Where's the entrance? <laughs> Hi, it's time to build a cave. Welcome back to another episode of Vanilla, folks. In the last episode, we worked on digging out this entire custom cave here and uh, getting it prepared for the decoration aspect of things. And the first thing that I need to do before we get started is move all of these materials a little bit. So, I think I'm actually going to make a, a tiny little hidden storage back here so that I can... Uh, Move a few of these things out. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Without having to actually deal with them just yet. Because <laughs> I'm not quite ready for that. So, hopefully, uh, I've got a little bit of space here. It's not too bad. Actually, what I will do is put away some of this stuff. And I'll actually put away the few oddities. And I'm just going to come down here and break this stuff like this. Do a little bit at a time. Ow. Try not to lose too much of it, but I should be able to get this all sorted up there nice and quickly. And in the process, uh, move all of the chests up there as well. Then I can get rid of the beacon itself and we can start flooding this place. Well, we might keep the beacon there just for a little bit of digging. So... Yeah, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes sorting out this mess, and then I'm excited to put this water in. I think it's going to be really cool. Okay, so transferred all of this up. We've got all of our stone on this side and some other bits and pieces over here. And I moved my other building materials up here as well. Now, all I want to do before I get rid of the beacon is just come through here and lower this section down a little bit. Deal with the lava, which I think I'm just going to do by covering up with the water here. And we might keep that as like a little bit of an audio cue. Something that we can hear as we uh, move through there. Because I believe I should still be able to hear the lava bubbling underneath, which would be really cool. But once we've uh, finished all of this and dug ourselves out a little bit of a spot, which shouldn't take long. I just need to make it feel a little bit more even, a little bit more uniform coming in here. And when I say even, I actually <laughs> technically mean a little bit more random and sporadic. I'm trying to make it feel less, uh, less built and more natural. So I'm just sort of sweeping my, my pickaxe back and forth, hitting random blocks as I do to make it feel like it's uh, part of a cave wall. That looks pretty good. So, we'll uh, pop our way through here. Might leave the obsidian exposed, actually, just so that it adds a little bit more interest to the whole area. That's part of the reason why I've done it this way, is because it actually keeps all of the ores and all of the deposits of the different ites, like the granite and the uh, andesite and the diorite. It keeps those exposed which means that this feels far more like it's naturally generated, at least in my opinion. Little chunks like that of the dirt and the diorite and gravel and bits and pieces does a lot of the work for me. Something a little bit along those lines, I think, will do. Eh, just a little bit more over here, coming down off that side of the uh, obsidian. In my head, when I'm doing stuff like this, I'm sort of... Uh, I'm thinking about how, in my mind, it would work naturally, like in the real world. So if I had water flowing down from here consistently, coming back into the, uh, the cave that we've built, it's going to carve itself a path through the rock. Now, obviously I am fudging things a little bit with the fact that if we'd set this pump up and actually created this ourselves, man-made, there wouldn't be enough time for this to have actually carved its way through the stone like I am showing it to. But, I mean, with Minecraft we can stretch the imagination a little bit. And so now I have this like funnel, this tunnel coming through here, like a natural river has carved its way through the stone back into a lower point. 
almost as if originally that area there was the main supply of water or the main um, reservoir, I suppose you'd call it, where all rainwater started to uh, collect. And maybe over time, it actually wore away at this long enough that it found a natural cave through here and the water broke through, sweeping down and carved itself out a new opening in a large area of the cave down here. So, with that, I think we uh, release the water. Like that scene from Lord of the Rings with the ants. So I'm going to open this up. And then we can remove our beacon and get to work filling it up with water. The fun part. Now all of this can be worked on over time. We can adjust it if things don't feel like they look right. But for now, I'm pretty confident that once I get some water flowing through here and, uh, and fill it up, it's going to look pretty decent just as it is already. All right, I've made a, a tiny little mob farm over there accidentally, but that's all right. Now we can remove this beacon. I'm just going to use the beacon's effect as long as I possibly can. There it goes. Keep haste to as long as possible. There it goes. But we'll pick up all of this. Just tidy up the very, very bottom of this pond. The pond, it's definitely an underground lake. And then the part that I've been most excited for is the flooding. All right, so a little bit of evening out like so, and then just using what we picked up to uh, blend it back in a little like that. Um, one more tiny little bit down the bottom, I think. And this is going to be our starting pond. We can call this one a pond. So, uh, first piece of water placed. And with this second one picked up, fix that. I have all of the water that I will need to turn this entire area into a giant lake. Stop it. <laughs> so now, <laughs> I can just spam bunch of water until it turns it all into source blocks and this way we have proper water supplies in every single slot and all I have to do is go around the outside and it's going to fill itself in like that so uh let's do a little bit of water filling and then see what it looks like And he's still alive. <laughs> so now we have water. Lots of water. <laughs> I've fully filled this in all the way out to there. We've managed to keep the water line even. And I might just go up into free cam a little bit. This is the underground lake that is supplying our area up top with all of the water that it needs. And I feel like that looks like a decent amount of water. It feels perfectly wide coming down through the middle here. And then this area does feel nice and deep to uh, hold a bunch of water in. So that's all working nicely. We've got a nice deep little lake in here. And we can build a, uh, a pumping station down from the top that is sucking up that water. But one of the things that I want to do, and I don't actually have what I need on me. Hold on. Um, it's fine. We will head out. Swoop. Oh, I nailed that. We'll grab ourselves. Hopefully I've got some. Um, she is. There's a few durability left. That's good. And we need to get ourselves a little bit of extra glow lichen. So with that one piece, we are going to make an empire <laughs> of glow lichen. I'm going to leave that one there. In fact, I got some bones. Bone meal back up. So, I've got a bit of an idea in my head how I should be able to set up a glow lichen farm. Um, we might work on that before we get into decorating all of this. The reason being, 
I uh, I really want to have all of the stuff available to me. Glow lichen, maybe some sea pickles, everything prepared to texturize, glow this up, light it up without torches and uh, make it look nice and pretty in a proper build. So, hmm, what we might do is a little bit of building. Oh, I nailed that again. So, if we come over to my redstone, what have I got? A sticky piston, some hoppers would be good, redstone, lever, okay. Um, what else do I need? I probably want an observer or two, which requires some cobblestone. There we go. And probably a dispenser. Yeah, which should be easy enough to make uh, with what we have here. So, where do I want to put it? Maybe, maybe in that little building that I made over here, actually. That's not a bad idea. Since I decided to just make it randomly, it's not bad to uh, use this for an actual purpose. So we might decorate in there at some point, but let me think how I want to do this. If we place these looking into each other, they're going to be making a bunch of ticks simultaneously. I'm going to make myself a couple of these. If I put this here, I can uh, turn that off. And when I turn it back on, it's going to click a lot faster. Yes. Nice. And then I should be able to put a dispenser on here that we put the bone meal in. And we just place this on there. And that's just going to grow it. I think... Then what we might want to do is put a hopper underneath here. I need a couple more things. What have we got? Do I have any barrels left? I do. I might take two barrels. Oh, and I'll grab my bone meal. Yes. <laughs> if this works, this is actually going to have happened a lot quicker than I first expected. So we put down our barrel there. If I put this hopper into that... That's going to pick stuff up and then I'm just going to uh, add a few things around about a hopper onto there. And how can we make this look nice? Not like that. Okay. So that is, I believe, going to work. If I put this in here, that's going to fill up our dispenser down here with bone meal. In fact, I can put a decent amount in. May as well fill up the dispenser itself first. There we go. That way we can hold heaps. And then let's just decorate ever so slightly. Super simple little farm that only took a couple of minutes to make. And it should work an absolute treat. So I'm going to put that there, that there. <laughs> we'll, uh, we may as well continue the design a little bit that I have over here. Some bone blocks and some of those. Sure. <laughs> Something like that. Now, put some of that away again. <laughs> Don't know why I'm unnecessarily uh, cleaning all this up and making it look a particular way, but it is what it is. There we go. <laughs> okay, as the night falls, let's test out our machine. If I turn this on... Oops, and let's not do that. I should be able to hold down in that position. Okay, that works. Uh, that works really well. <laughs> I thought this up, this is no joke. I thought up this idea uh, while I was lying in bed unable to sleep one night because I knew that I wanted to make myself a little farm. So I've played that much Minecraft. Oh, it's sad to say, but I've played that much Minecraft that I can visualize building things a little bit if I need to. Look at that. Getting ourselves all of the glow lichen we'll ever need. Now, obviously this isn't a very difficult design to come up with. It's pretty basic. Um, if it does happen to be similar to some designs that you might've seen, it wouldn't surprise me, but uh, yeah, just a, a little hopper clock using the, uh, the redstone. Oh, I did not mean to do that. And it's actually going faster than this uh, this hopper can keep up. So yeah, just need to run this for a few minutes. 
get ourselves a little bit, and that's all the glow lichen we'll need for this build, and for any build in the future. Glow lichen. Now, probably just put these in here for the time being. That way, when we come back at any time, we can collect what we need. I'm going to put all of that together. I want to see how much we got. Nearly six stacks in a couple of minutes. That'll do. Perfect. So, I can put away a few things here. And now, we've got ourselves sorted with one lighting source. Nice and easily. Plenty of glow lighting to go around. I'm actually going to take some of these shears. And we're going to head out to where I know there is... Oh, hello, Mr. Sheep. Where I know there is a little bit of a coral reef. So, grab myself last spare shulker box it's empty we still do have enough to make 20 more so i'm not too worried about that and let's head out this direction because not only would i like to gather myself a little bit of sea pickles because i think they're a nice slightly brighter source of light to put down in different parts but also a couple of bits of the coral itself or the coral fans more to the point would be nice for some decorating too so I believe over this way, there is a ship out in the water. Oh, that's a lot of bees. Just out here. And a coral reef just over this way. That might not be the boat that I was thinking. This one. <laughs> coral reef. Coral, coral reef. There it is. I knew there was. Shouldn't doubt myself. Is that also a desert? Did I really travel as far as I did that time to find a desert where there was stuff this close? You're kidding me. And a mangrove forest. Or a mangrove swamp. Teeny tiny little one. Oh, I suppose I could grab some lily pads. We may even use some of the uh, the roots from these mangrove as a little bit of decoration in our uh, in our cave itself. Just to add some, uh, some variation, some interest. I have still yet to ever see a frog in Minecraft. We will find some, eventually. There may even be an episode dedicated to it. All right. So, there is heaps, heaps and heaps and heaps of coral around here. We can just duck down, grab ourselves some, uh, some fans. I want the ones that usually sit on top, so we need to find uh, a couple of those, like this one. Does that not give it? Wait a second. Does it need to be silk touch? It does. Oh, why did I even bother bringing what I did then? That's alright. So we can go around gathering ourselves some of these, some of those, blah, blah, blah. But I don't actually want them for the color. I just want them for the texture and the model. I'm, I'm going to dry them out and use them for like a stony variety. So give me a minute. We'll collect up some of these and then uh, take it back and see what things feel like. Yeah. All right. So I didn't actually end up using the shulker box because I grabbed what I reckon will be more than enough. And I'm just going to lay it all out and let it dry. Like that. Yeah. The reason I want to do this is just so that I can add a little bit of uh, variation to some stuff on the walls and some stalactites and stalagmites that I want to play around with. And I'm not really looking to make the cave itself a colourful area more than I am a, uh, a stony area. So all of these different variations that I can use are going to be really nice. But I just don't need that many. It's going to be occasionally popped in there amongst some other bits and pieces. And I should be able to uh, make it look pretty nice. Now. Yes, that works. And this will dry out. Yeah. Can I put it down on this? I can. Okay, wonderful. We're just going to these fins and fans and bits and pieces down and then carefully go through with our uh, silk touch pick and <laughs> collect it all so that we don't lose some of it now the question is are these different i think they are slightly but they all look fairly similar when uh when it comes down to it so mostly these fins are just going to be used to uh add a little bit of interest change up some things underwater as well as above the water all that jazz uh, we got one more this i actually think going for some things like this might be uh, a good idea to get a couple more of the bluer type because that's uh 
that's sort of like mini little um, stalactites, stalagmites, stalagmites, little like calcium deposits or something in that cave would be really cool. So, doop doop do, collect all of these up. All right, and I should be able to pick all of this up, and we've got ourselves some decoration items. Perfect. Now I can probably use this. Right, so, got a couple of lily pads. The seagrass is basically inconsequential because I can make that with some bone meal, and the sea pickles we can duplicate with bone meal as well. That is probably all that I need for doing some decorating down here, and really turning this into a unique and uh, well-crafted little cave. Yeah. Oh, we should take the... Hi, oh, nailing that every time. <laughs> we should take this up here and uh, just grab... We'll grab four of those. And I didn't need these ones either. Oops. Okay. So, we have some coral. We know where there's more if we ever want to uh, get some more. But I think that should do just for adding a little bit of detail. We have ourselves the lighting options that we need, glow lichen and the sea pickles as well. We have ourselves some tuff over here and some dripstone for some different color and some different additives. I'm excited to see if I can add some tuff and uh, this coral together. And then I think the dripstone stuff will be sort of separate. We might have some that is natural or more natural stone like this that we texture up with some tuff and the... Uh, coral itself and then have some more dripstoney pointy ones going. I think that would be cool. But I've been a little bit unwell the last few days. And as such, I think we're going to leave the episode here. Rather than me finishing the episode off with a massive build, I think we might dedicate the next episode to decorating and getting this all complete as well as the pumping station. We might not do the build above, but I think we can finalize the inside of the cave. So it's going to be a bit of a shorter one. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope uh, you enjoy this little area and how it's starting to look. And uh, I think we'll do some adjustment with the lights and whatnot so that it's not as bright. I want it to be moody. I want it to uh, really play off the ability to lower the light levels using uh, Glow Lichen and the 1.18 lighting so that we can have this feel like a nice dark underground cavern. And maybe we'll have a couple of little walkways or something to different areas that we can add over time. But with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I genuinely appreciate you all so much. And uh, to everyone who's been watching and continuing to follow along, this is episode 21. We're doing all right. And I've got some great ideas still to go forward. I'm excited for this world and I'm excited to be taking things a little bit easier. Less in each episode, but it's more fun for me to just chip away at it and do little things instead of aiming for mega, mega builds each episode. That's, uh, that's a lot to do mentally. And I think I really enjoyed this a lot more where I just focus on small things and, and try and provide some episodes for you to enjoy and chill out to. So I hope that was the case, that you found this relaxing and enjoyable. And until the next episode, I hope you take care of yourselves and I'll see you then. Bye-bye everyone. Uh, whoop.